are zero and one heading into week two of the 2023 NFL season. We are here to break it all down. Thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of the All Cardinals podcast. My name is Donnie Drew and joined every week by my co-host Richie Bradshaw. Before we get into the game, go to comment, like, subscribe to the video below. A giveaway is coming very, very soon. I promise. Follow our work at allcardinals.com or si.com slash NFL slash Cardinals Richie week one is officially in the books football season is now fully underway the Cardinals lost to the commanders by a score of 20 to 16 on Sunday but before we get into all that how are you you know I'm pretty good Donnie I uh I had a good week in fantasy football went 2-0 uh eked it by because this was a really weird first week of fantasy football not a lot of people did well like a lot of guys underachieved and underperformed so very fortunate to be able to start the year 1-0 in both of my leagues, and we'll brag about that. But other than that, you know, weather is nice out in Arizona, as a lot of our natives know, and we're in the midst of football season. So life is good, my friend. Yeah, I made the mistake of stacking Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase in our league uh, week one. So I'm it's sure better days are it. ahead, but... It, it is what it is, definitely. Um, if you're a fantasy football player, the success of your team definitely resides on you and nothing else. You should take it personal, uh, yeah. especially whenever you... It's not luck-based at all. Nope, nope, not at all. You control everything. It's your fault. Uh, <laughs> the Commanders walked away from FedEx Field with the win 20-16. to 16. Uh, Just give me your overall thoughts on the game. I thought it was a game that the Cardinals very, very much could have won, which is almost the best case scenario. And I mean, we talked about it in our preview of the game. Um, We would not have been shocked if the the Cardinals had won. They were seven point underdogs heading into the the game. Uh, They led at halftime. They led for pretty much the entire third quarter and eventually let it slip away. But overall, your, your thoughts on Arizona and how they looked in week one? You know what, Donnie, this is a team that ended up having the grit that me and you talked about and me and you gave the credit to. And, you know, sometimes we do buy into the national media and, you know, for a local podcast, there's times where we don't really have the same faith that the fans do. But, you know, what me and you did say last week, and if you want to go and rewatch that podcast, you can go and rewatch it. We said we wouldn't have been surprised if they were able to pull this out. And Donnie, they almost pulled it out. They played a very good game, especially on the defensive side of the football where they got six sacks, they got an interception. They played out of their minds. And clearly, these guys are buying into the Jonathan Gannon defense. And this is is a unit that is embracing that kind of culture and they're understanding that next man up philosophy and maybe even that underdog of like nobody... Nobody believes we're going to do good and we're going to come out here and we're going to be in a lot of games this year. You know, they're going to bite kneecaps as Dan Campbell would say, like this is, this is a team that is not going to roll over on its back. Everybody says that they should tank and to a certain extent, sure, they should tank to get better draft picks, but teams and players and coaches don't want to tank. And that has never been more evident than what the Cardinals were able to do in FedEx field against the commanders. And keep in mind, the commanders were also a team that are, are, are embracing a new uh, mentality and a new face to their franchise as well. With new ownership, they're, they're all bought in too. So you had two teams that were just so determined to beat each other and look at the Cardinals that are probably a lot more let or a lot less talented, I should say than the commanders are and they came out and gave them a good run for the money yeah i love how you brought up the the commanders going through kind of their own um remolding and reshifting fedex field was a electric factory on sunday it was very very cool to see those commanders fans get behind that team because similar to the problems that we often see in arizona a lot of times fans from the opposing teams invade fedex field and they they definitely take over that stadium that was not the case on sunday and i think that kind of gives you hope that maybe sooner rather than later here in the desert at state farm stadium that can happen too where the red sea will actually return to to full force but first a winning and a winning football program and a new hope and needs to be seen for these people in arizona to come out and support the cardinals and i think we kind of got a little glimpse of that on sunday they were not able to win and there's so much of it like an unknown factor heading into week one you really don't to you know keep kind of harping on the same point you and i talked last week and we had no idea what to expect the they, cardinals could have won the cardinals could have lost we really didn't have a good read on the game but i, I feel like all in all 
they played really, really well. And there was just an energy, Richie. There, yeah. there was a different swagger to this Cardinals team. We did not see towards the end of the Cliff Kingsbury era. So for so much of the, the culture talk and the, the changing of regime and what Jonathan Gannon would be able to get his guys to do, I think if you're a Cardinals fan and you got done watching that game, you feel pretty damn good about not maybe the like the immediate success of what Arizona will do, but the future as well under underneath his leadership. Yep. What we need to understand as people that are observing this team and fans especially need to understand is this is this is not a year that you should anticipate going to the playoffs. This is not a year that you should anticipate competing for the division. Nothing like that. What you want to see is the culture start to improve. You want to see people that are buying into the Arizona Cardinals. You want to see that progress moving forward that Jonathan Gannon is going to have an impact on this team. That's what you're measuring. That's your measurement of success. Not the wins, not the losses, not the statistics. Yep. You want to see the culture change. You want to see that these guys are buying in, like not to be a broken record, but that is what you want to see. This is entirely the, the point of what you're looking for out of this team. You just want to see some momentum start to build for this team. You want to see them be in games, you know, keep it close, keep it within one possession, keep it within 10 points, whatever. Just find a way to be watchable this year. Because quite frankly, as we've talked about, I think there's going to be a lot of games where you're going to have a hard time watching this team. But if they're able to do what they did against Washington more often than not this year, who knows, Donnie, maybe they are going to be worth watching. No, maybe indeed. I would love to get into the offensive side of the football first. Um, I think struggles might be putting it lightly. It's just a little over 200, 200 net yards. Yeah. Um, Josh Dobbs didn't get the start indeed like everybody um, had initially thought he would after he got traded for a fifth round pick in the preseason. 4.4 yards per attempt for Josh Dobbs. It was a very underwhelming day. I feel like Zach Ertz had a pretty good day, 10 targets. Uh, James Conner, whenever they were able to rely on the, the rushing attack, looked fairly solid too. Marquise Brown looked like the, the receiver you had hoped he was. Uh, Michael Wilson, I did like the flashes that we saw out of him, but just an overall, just not great showing for the Cardinals offense. And um, definitely a tough task at hand. You do have to uh, credit to the Washington defense, a very formidable front, even without Chase Young, definitely still held their own. And it, at least kind of looking at it from like a, a commander's perspective, a lot of people think that, you know, they've had a pretty good roster for a while and it, it wouldn't have been shocking for them to have won week one. And um, they definitely expected, I mean, they were seven point favorites, right? It, it was the second largest spread heading into week one. So, um, you definitely want to see more moving forward, but Drew Petzing, first time off offensive coordinator, Josh Dobbs had like six practice days with the first team offense before heading into it. So all in all, not terrible, but you need to see improvement heading forward. Yeah, absolutely. And like to a certain extent, Josh, Joshua Dobbs does deserve a mulligan for this game because he has really had next to no time to be able to get acquainted, not just with the scheme, but with, the guys he's throwing the ball to, the guys he's handing the ball off to, the guys who are protecting him up front, the guys who are going to be getting them the ball back on defense. He has no familiarity. He now has a game under his belt. Was it a good game? No, not at all. He was atrocious, if we're being honest, but deserves a mulligan. Truly does. Like, this is, you're just going to be hoping to see some steps forward because he did have three fumbles. He lost two of them. He was 21 of 30 for just over 100 yards and took three sacks and was not able to do very much as a whole. You yeah. just need to be able to see him hopefully get a little more comfortable this week and get some more reps under his belt. Obviously, he has been named the starter already, which I do think is the right move because as Same. much as I want to be tune time, it's not a very good idea. And for the Cardinals that want to be competitive this year, Joshua Dobbs does give you a more competitive aspect than a Clayton Toon does. You just are hoping that things are going to be running a little more smoothly this week, like a more well-oiled machine. You want to see Hollywood get more involved. You want the depth of targets for Zach Ertz to not be two yards and hopefully get Rondell Moore some more opportunities, get James Conner rolling. Like There's pieces here. It's just a matter of... Yeah getting that ball rolling and hopefully in week two we can see progress don't expect it to be a well-oiled machine but you're really just hoping it's better than what you saw last week 
Yeah, and you know, we already said it, Josh Dobbs, 4.4 yards per attempt. Not going to get the job done at all. You have to push the ball a little bit further down the field. Part of me thinks that might have been the game plan, which is keep things very short and sweet for Josh Dobbs. Don't overcomplicate things for him. And the rest of the offense, too, we have to remember, this is a brand new scheme that Drew Petzing, uh, that like we mentioned, the first year offensive coordinator, is for all of these guys. Right. I mean, these guys are all kind of, you know, learning on the fly. And that was really their their first full go regular season action. Like that's not something you simulate in practice. That's not something you're going to see a whole lot of in preseason, too. And a lot of the starters barely played in the preseason as well. So it, it's going to take some time for guys to really get their feet underneath them. I wonder how much of the offensive capabilities, because I, I feel like they didn't push the ball downfield at all. I wonder how much of that was them being behind schedule, second and long, third and long, and how much of that was Drew Petzing having his own his, his own first time experience as an offense coordinator, right? I mean, he was very conservative down down the stretch, didn't really give his team a chance. I feel like whenever it was second or third down, uh, you know, a handful of screens, a handful of halfback draws, kind of waving a white flag and getting the punt team out there without giving his guys a, a true shot uh, to pick that up. Would Clayton Toon have changed that? Maybe. I know Toon loves to push the ball deep down the field, and that's what a lot of fans here in Arizona love about him. But I think you hit the, the nail on the head best. If you're looking for a guy to give you a best shot to win right now, it's going to be Josh Dobbs. It's going to be his veteran experience, and it's going to be his overall knowledge of the offense. So, I mean, they're still without a touchdown. The only touchdown from the Cardinals came on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, they got into the red zone, I think, twice. They got down to like the 19 or maybe like the 22 a handful of times. Weren't able to punch it in. Um, I know Josh Dobbs had to throw his accurate. That was just out of reach a little bit too high um, that Dobbs would have liked to have back. But week one, it's a very long season. At some point, you are going to get Kyler Murray back. Um, and the, the hope is for them just to stay to the boat until Murray is fully healthy and available any other notes on the offense before we move on to the actual bright spot for the Cardinals? I don't think so. The, there really just was not much to write home about on the offensive side of the football. You need to see significant uh, steps forward at this point. Like, you're at rock bottom. I don't know that the offense can be worse than what they put together. You know, just just over 200 total yards, no touchdowns. It's hard to imagine they can be worse than that. But that is not a challenge. That is not a challenge. Well, moving on to an actual bright spot of this team. And I know when you talk about the Arizona Cardinals, sometimes things can tend to be um, skewed and more so of a, of a negative light. Richie, watching his defense come out, six sacks, I think three total turnovers, one score. They got after Sam Howell for, I feel like, a very, very good majority of the day. I feel like at all three levels, plays were being made. I mean, Kaiser White flew sideline to sideline, which is something that, you know, you really didn't see a whole lot of from Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons last year. Um, a heavy, heavy rotation on the front seven. I thought these defense played phenomenal. I thought they were given the short end of the stick with Josh Dobbs' two turnovers um, and uh, 10 total points from the commanders in the fourth quarter, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, I think both came on a short field. Rarely did the commanders piece together this long drive and you know head down and, and punch it in. I was impressed. And I was impressed more than anything with the energy, the tenacity, and how they got after the quarterback. Donnie, these guys were playing with their hair on fire. They were flying around the field, like you said. Kazir White looked exactly like he did last year in Philly. He looks worth the contract he gave him. And like you said, significantly better than what you saw from Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins over the last couple of years at that same position. He looks like the real deal, going to be the captain of the defense, the quarterback of the defense, if you will. Like, you loved what you got to see out of him. But then the pass rush, too. You were getting sacks from guys who have names that sound like they were generated on on Madden. Like, obviously, uh, we're familiar with guys like Lecky Fotu and uh, mm -hmm. Victor Dimikiji. Is that how you say it? Dimikiji. Dimikiji. Like, yep. Cardinal fans are familiar with them. The diehards are, at least. The mass media is going to be like, that's not a real name. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> don't know what to Dude, tell it, you. It, it, it's like the, the AI fans, the, the Rams put in the stadium. Oh, my God. That was terrifying. That was wild. That's insane. But point is, like, they were generating pressure. 
and they were able to get back there with not household names is what I'm trying to say. This is not an insult to them at all. This is simply saying nobody knows who these guys are, and yet Jonathan Gannon was able to get the most out of them. They were able to get uh, Dimi Keje and uh, Lucky Foe to Dennis Gardak had two sacks. Jonathan yeah. Ledbetter, like uh, Carlos Watkins. They, they were able to get those guys into the backfield to generate the pressure to get the sacks, which is what we saw out of Gannon's defense last year in Philly. He got sacks from everybody. Looks like it's going to be nice and distributed this year. Now, granted, Washington's offensive line, I'd say, is about average. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's right in the middle. You'll love to see it. How will they do against others? Who knows? But very encouraging sign to start off the the Jonathan Gannon era of the of the Cardinals, and especially the defensive side of the football. Did a very good job. And the turnovers, too. You know, steak sauce, for sure. Yeah, I think if you're a Cardinals fan, at least on the defensive side of the ball, you were looking for only a handful of things. Um, you wanted to see them get after the quarterback. You wanted to see actual pressure come. Um, and you wanted to see them kind of like lock down an offense for once. And I feel like that's exactly what we saw. Um, very few times that I find myself watching that game on Sunday and they think, oh, man, here comes Washington. You know, the commander is going to score here. What's what's the Cardinals going to do? Um, very early on, Nick Rallis sent multiple blitzes at Sam Howell in the Washington offense. He did not hold back at all. Really love to see it, you know, let his guys loose from the get-go. And I think that kind of helped set the tone. And um, the, the first drive Washington scored on, I think it was their, their second, 67 penalty yards. Two of those were personal fouls. Um, the other was a pass interference on Marco Wilson, which is bailed out by a, a bad ball, at least I thought. But the, just the aggression and the overall like dog mentality, right? It's been a minute since Cardinals fans have seen that, right? It, it just it has not been there, at least under Cliff Kingsbury, at least under Vance Joseph, they with more attitude. talented teams. They yeah, have attitude. attitude. Like like you to see Buda Baker flying everywhere all over the field, almost taking off his his own teammate's head um, a, a handful of times, on top of all the other guys swarming to the ball too. It was refreshing. It was really really nice to see. And kind of get off topic here a little bit. I think that showed they made the right decision with Isaiah Simmons. If you watched the last preseason game, Isaiah played very little effort, Lacking very musical. little will to want to move towards the football. I think they saw that on film and they were like, hey, you got to go, man. Like if, if we don't have 11 hats flying to the football on every single play, we're not going to win games. We're not going to find ourselves in positions to win games. And you can't be a part of this moving forward. I think that speaks to the culture Jonathan Gannon and Nick Rallis have established in Arizona. And I think at least for 2023, they're really setting up to be one of those more old school traditional, hey, we want to establish the run. We want to play really great defense. And we just need our quarterback to not turn the ball over. And we can move on from there. That's exactly the kind of vibes I got from this team in week one. And I think that's what we're going to see for a majority of the season moving forward. Yes. Now, what I want to add on to what you said, because I agree with everything you said, especially with the Isaiah Simmons thing. Relate this a little bit to the Sun Devils. And you've got a new regime in there as well. You've got a brand new staff. And... On the defensive side of the football, you got you have a guy named Brian Ward who came down from uh, Washington State. Arizona State is, through two games so far, had a very good defense. And one of the things that he preached, that his staff preached, and that these players preached, they have a mentality, Donnie, and they say, do your 111. There's 11 players on defense. You need to do your 111 on that part. When I watched that Cardinals defense, Donnie, they were all doing their job. They were flying to the football. They were creating pressure. They were making turnovers. They were getting tackles. They were doing their 111. They were all participating. And that is 100% one of the biggest reasons why Isaiah Simmons was no longer a fit is he simply was just not going to be giving the effort that they're looking for because he kind of quit on the team. He didn't want to play the position. He just was checked out. It was lackadaisical effort and the Cardinals moved on. And now they have guys that are doing their one 11. 
You uh, love I do. I want to say the the guy that picked up on waivers, Kayvon Wallace, made a handful of plays yesterday, and I, I think he really, really looked good. And the, the Cardinals knew, I think, whenever they first picked him up, he's going to kind of be that Simmons replacement. Uh, man, he definitely made his name known for Cardinals fans at least yesterday during the game. And kind of like to, to put an overall bow on this conversation. It was a loss, Richie. But I think if you're a Cardinals fan, you knew coming to 2023, wins are going to be kind of hard to come by. I feel good. I feel good. Like, I, I don't have them going to the Super Bowl. I don't have them making the postseason. Um, they're very much still going to be in contention for a top five pick. But after watching the first 60 official minutes of the Jonathan Gannon era in, their era in Arizona, say that three times, I feel good. I feel good about the things he's trying to do, the things he's trying to implement, and the overall direction of his team. The offense desperately needs to get their stuff together, but they don't have Kyler Murray. They're working with a brand new offensive scheme than you know they pre- previously ran a year ago. I feel good. I feel really, really good about what the potential can be moving forward because of the building blocks that we saw on Sunday. You just have seen that culture change. And as long as that continues to be the case, you have to be happy. Now, I'm not a big moral victory guy. To me, more often than not, a loss is a loss. But if you do believe in moral victories, this is a moral victory. This was absolutely a best case scenario win for the Sun. We're so used to talking about them. Win for the Cardinals. Forks up, but let's go birds. Yeah, a very, very big test in week two is coming up with the New York football giants who uh, didn't exactly win themselves on Sunday Night Football. 40-0 to zero shut out. So you definitely bet your bottom dollar the Giants are going to be coming to State Farm Stadium for the home opener, looking to rectify, uh, uh, frankly, very embarrassing loss on national television. So uh, I know the Cardinals are five and a half point underdogs heading into uh, week two. Again, nobody really thinks they're going to win. Can they push the the New York football giants to the brink of a potential loss? Probably. I mean, me and Richie will be here a little bit later in the week to break all of that down. But after one week of football, Richie, I think Cardinals fans have to like where they're at. Still a lot to be seen moving forward. But one game sample size, Jonathan Gannon era is here, and I think Cardinals fans should definitely be happy about what they saw on Sunday. Absolutely. I don't have anything else to add. I think you've nailed it. Celebrate, Cardinal fans celebrate the moral victories there's going to be there's going to be a lot of moral victories this year even if they're look the cardinals could go nine and eight and you would still have a lot of moral victories here that's what you're looking for this year whether you go oh and 17 or 17 and oh just look for your moral victories and move forward with that this is a moral victory if you believe in them celebrate it yep but unfortunately, the Cardinals do not, and they will be looking to get back in the win column. Home opener Sunday, State Farm Stadium against the New York Football Giants in the afternoon. We hope to see you guys there, and we'll see you guys a little bit later this week whenever Richie and I break down the New York Giants matchup. But until then, thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of the All Cardinals Podcast. Follow Richie on Twitter at RichieBrads36. Follow me on Twitter at Don and Drew, and follow our work at allcardinals.com or si.com slash NFL slash Cardinals. We'll see you guys next time.